In the following video, we're going to be graphing exponential decay functions. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the properties of the parent function of an exponential decay. And so if we take a look, we notice exponential decay from the definition in the first video is going to be decreasing from left to right. Now, when dealing with exponential decay, it's going to have the same format of the function, y equals b to the x power. It's just now what tells us that is decay is that your B value is going to be between 0 and 1. The domain is still all real numbers. And your range is all positive real numbers, which means Y is greater than 0. And so our asymptote again is the X axis, which is the equation Y equals 0. So we see the graph approaches the x-axis but never crosses it, and we still have an intercept of 0, 1. And so this is the general setup of exponential decay functions. And we're going to apply this setup to assist us with graphing. Now, graphing, we're going to do the same idea. We are going to rely on our calculator to assist us with the graphing. We have y equals 1 fifth the x. What you can't rely on the calculator for is determine if it's growth or decay. So I notice here that b is 1 fifth. And since 1 fifth is between 0 and 1, that tells me this is going to be a decay function. We need to be able to figure that out without a calculator. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to grab my graphing calculator go to my y equals, and I'm going to put in my decay function. Since it's a fraction of 1 fifth, I'm going to do parentheses 1 divided by 5, and then raise that to the x power. And so here is my function. I'm going to look at the table, so second graph for my table. I want to go from negative 3 to positive 2. If I look at my screen, negative 3 to 3, this contains everything. So I am just going to copy down that table. And so negative 3 is 125. Negative 2 is 25. I'm at 0. I'm at 1. At 1, I'm at 0.2. And at 2, I am at 0 0.04. And so you notice here, we have a negative 1 half spot. We have a 3 half spot. But my table only went by intervals of one. Now there's multiple ways you can do this. One quick way to do it is to hit the calculate menu. So second trace. You want to calculate a value on your graph. So I can hit value. It's going to grab my function so I can see what my graph looks like. And then it's going to ask me to input my x, which is negative one half, so negative 0.5. And I get 2.236. So I'm going to get 2. 2.4. I can do the same thing for 3 halves. I can go to my calculator, second calc value, 3 halves, 3 divided by 2, and I'm at 0 0.089. So I can write down 0.09. And now I'm just going to plot the points. At negative 3, I am way up beyond anything even close, 125. At negative 2, I am all the way up here to 25. So I can't graph those. And so at negative 1 half, I am at 2.24. And so at negative 1 half, I'm going to plot a point at 2.24. At zero. I'm at 1. At 1, I'm at 0 0.2, then 0 0.09, and then 0 0.04, and so on and so on. And so to graph this, I start at my y-intercept, and I'm going to go to the left, and I'm going to go up with the curve. But when I get to negative 2, I'm not going to in any way cross that line, because at negative 2, I'm all the way at 25. And then we go to the right with my curve, but I'm not going to cross the x-axis for it. 
And so there's my exponential decay. It decreases from left to right. My domain is always going to be all real numbers for it. What about my range? My range depends on my asymptote. And so the graph is going to approach zero. It's going to approach zero, but it's never going to cross it. So your y values must be greater than zero. So let's look at one more. We have a larger problem, four times one half to the x minus one power plus two. And so for this one, I'm going to kind of use the idea of h and k. You know, I see here a is four. The b is one half. And since one half is between zero and one, that tells me dk. My h, I have x minus one in the exponent. So my h is one. My k is two. Now remember the k value assists us with identifying the asymptote. I am just going to type this in my calculator and get the table of values. It's going to be a little difficult. In Y1, I'm going to type using the new operating system. And then I'm in Y2, I'm going to go through and do the old operating system because of how difficult to type this in it can be in the old one. So the new one, I would do four parentheses, one divided by two for the one half parentheses, hit the caret and type in X minus one. I would then hit the right arrow to come off the exponent and hit plus two. So we can see how nice the new operating system is. It looks just like it is written on here. But if I have the old operating system, it's going to look a little different. So make sure you see what this one looks like. I'll take a capture of it. And then I'm going to go in my calculator mode. I'm going to hit the up arrow to go to the bottom of the list. And I see here math print and then classic. If I go to classic, that's the old operating system, the classic one. And then I go to y equals. You see it converted it for me into what it should look like. And that's what I want to talk about. You still do four on the outside parentheses, one divided by two. Just now when you do your caret, since there's an expression inside the exponent, you're going to have to put it in a parentheses, x minus 1. And then you're going to have to close the parentheses so you can get to the plus 2. And so this is what the old operating system looks like. And so you can see both ways of doing and typing it in. I'm going to grab my table of values. It looks like I want from negative 2 to 6. So I'm going to grab from negative 2 to 4 first. And so from negative 2 to 4, I have 34, 18, I have 10, I have 6, I have 4, I have 3. And I have 2.5. And then I'm going to grab from my table, scroll down so I can see my 5 and 6 values for it. And for 5, I have 2.25. And for 6, I have 2.125. And so I have my table of values. I even showed you how to input it using the two different operating systems. And so here are my table of values, copy from my calculator, plot the points. And negative two, you're all the way up to 34. I can't even graph it. And negative one, I'm all the way up to 18, can't graph it. At zero, I am at 10. I can finally graph that one. But I need to remember that this means my negative one is all the way up here. At one, I am at six. At two, I am at four. At three, I am at three. At four, I'm at 2.5. 
at two, I'm, at, I'm sorry, at five, I'm at 2.25. At six, 2.125. And so you can see it starts to come and it looks like it's going to approach the line y equals two. And so then I'm just going to sketch my curve. I'm going to come down and I'm going to approach the line y equals two, not cross it, and then go up. So now let's state our domain and range. The domain is all real numbers for our x's. In our range, we can see on our graph it's approaching 2. But I always like to look at my k value. The k value assists us with our range. Our range, our y, has to be greater than 2. It's approaching that line, but it will never cross it. And so that is how you graph exponential decay functions. We're going to rely on the calculator for the table of values, input it, plot them, and connect with a curve.